Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy. Well, I wanted to give you a real quick lesson today showing you this cool boogie rhythm in C6 tuning. So let's go ahead and, and check out this chord voicing here. Now, uh, these jam tracks that I'm going to be playing will be available on my site for those that have a subscription or get the lesson. Uh, we're going to start off in the key of G, although we are in C6 tuning. And this first chord grab is going to sound like this. Right, we're going to be grabbing that fifth string third string and second string. So before I talk too much, let me go ahead and play this rhythm with the jam track. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's the idea. So uh, for those of you that can already play this, that rhythm, you know, go ahead and have fun with it. But for those that want me to break that down a little bit um, slower, show you exactly what's going on, because there is a lot of syncopation with that rhythm. That's probably a rhythm you've heard tons of times, right? Um, once again, I'm grabbing strings five, three, and two. Let's break that down even more and show you what the chord tones are you're playing there. Once again, C6 tuning, C, E, G, A, C, E. So when you grab strings five, three, and two, you're actually gr grabbing the third of the chord, the sixth of the chord, and the root note. Right, and you get that cool voicing. Well, why is that so neat? Well, that voicing's great because if you move it, if you move it down like that, then you get a, a cool kind of dominant ninth chord. Right, but... And then the other way that that voicing is neat is if you do what's called an inversion of that, bringing in that root note and playing that on your sixth string, but then go in ahead and grab in strings five and three. So you grab strings six, five, and three. Like that, that's a cool voicing too. So if we're counting that, one, two, three, four, one. So if we break that down, we've got one, one, and three. So it starts on the and of beat one, one, and, and then you're not going to play beat two. So one, and, three, one, and, one, and, bop, bop, Okay, so since this is a 12-bar blues form that we're playing, the chords that we're going to be playing when the chord changes, so we got the G right there, and then we'll move to our 12th fret for that C, and then the 14th fret for the D. So that's the whole basis, right, for this 12-bar blues. So we're going to do four bars of G. Let me show you what that sounds like. Two, three, four. Let me slow that down a little bit. I think that, that might be a little fast for educational purposes and we'll, we'll play about 120 here's at 120 and i'm using band in the box too to make these jam tracks if you guys were wondering oops there we go one two three four switch to 12th fret back to 7th fret 14th fret, 7th, let me go ahead and change that, I have a 5 chord there at the end, so I'll go ahead and make that still a, a G chord, okay, so let's try that again, and I might even do it a little bit slower, let's try 100, and you can play along with me. One, two, three, four.
so that's oh, let me stop that so that's the idea right 12 bar blues and uh grabbing that same that same chord voicing there let's try it with the inversion of that like i was saying this is the, that that one there is strings five three and two that's the major third the sixth and the root of the chord so let's take that root and put it on our sixth string we got string six five and three there let's see how that sounds i'm gonna speed that up a little bit that's a little slow let's do about 130. So I don't like that voicing as much, right? But that that kind of gets you kind of with a di little bit different voice. I do like that voice and when you slide it down too frets. I think that sounds cool, you know. You know, taking that voice in strings five, three, and two. Down two frets and then taking strings six, five, and three down two frets. So keep in mind, you can make, because of a, when you play blues, it's based off of dominant chords, right? But pretty much all the chords could be dominant seventh chords, meaning that that <clears throat> doing that little trick of taking the chord, you know, and moving it down two frets can sound really cool. Let me show you that. I'll just kind of improvise here. What I was doing there, and, and some of that that you might heard, you can jump up to that first string, and it sounds real nice. You know, walking up to the to the chord. Basically, you can take your your chord position here, and it's real nice to work walking up to that position two frets behind it, like and just. And some of you might have seen the Eddie Rivers video that's on YouTube, and he talks a lot about that. You know. You know, walking into the the chord and kind of two two frets behind it, but then turning that chord dominant is real nice and grabbing that that voicing there just works really nice. Strings five, three, and two. doing something like that where you slide up on the top two strings and then bring that voicing down two frets also works real nice so let's go back just to that that uh jump kind of uh boogie woogie rhythm
So let me let me take this a step further here. And if we have this voicing here for our one chord, our G chord, let's say. And when we go to that C chord, instead of doing the exact same voicing on our 12th fret, let's try this. Let's try taking this note here, that G note, and keeping that in the chord. That's going to be here, right? And we're going to grab this voicing here for the C, which is basically, remember how I said, you know, if we have this voicing here, strings 5, 3, and 2, and to get an inversion of that, bring that root note down to your sixth string, and you play strings six, five, and three, like that, right? And you can bring that back two frets, and that'll give you that dominant ninth, dominant seventh, it's actually a dominant ninth chord. So we're gonna play that chord for our C chord, and when we go to our D chord, we'll move it up. It'll look like you're playing a C chord, but you're actually playing a D9 chord, because you're playing strings six, five, and three, which is this, Right, that D moved it back two frets. It makes it look like you're playing a C chord on your 12th fret, but it's really a dominant version of that, of that D chord. So let's try that once again. The G chord is going to be strings 5, 3, and 2, 7th fret. The C chord is going to be strings 6, 5, and 3, but on your 10th fret. Notice how we got... And then the D chord will be the exact same grip there, just up on our 12th fret. Let's see how that sounds. One, two, three, four. C chord. I like to go slow, so let's slow everything down. And I know I repeat myself, but I do that on purpose. Once again, let's let's go over that chord progression, explaining what we're doing there. Right there, we're playing a, a G6 chord, really. We're playing the third, the sixth, and the root of that chord. Sounds great. If you ever want to make it dominant, take that, right, like that. If you want a lower version of that, drop your root note. Slide it back two frets, right? There is string six, five, and three. That would be the root, the major third, and the sixth. But when you slide it down, you actually get the flat seven, the ninth, right? Ninth, yeah, ninth, and then the fifth. Anyway, just know that it's a cool sound and bluesy chord. So what I did there is when I went to the C chord, I grabbed this grip, 10th fret, string 6, 5, and 3, which is that dominant 7th, dom actually dominant 9th version of that, that C, C chord. It's a C9 chord, really. And then I just moved it up for the D chord. <clears throat> Let me play it again. Starting off with this strings 5, 3, 2. That da, da, da. Right? All I'm doing there is just putting in a little fill, sliding from fret six to seven on my second and first string, and then grabbing that grip again, strings five, three, and two. And then anytime I want to make that G into a G7 chord or G9 chord, really, slide it back two frets, right? So anytime, it just sounds real nice to 
you know, adding that second and first string. And all I'm doing there is grabbing that strings five, three, and two, sliding it back two frets. And that makes that D6 chord, really, into a D9 chord. And then you can do the inversion of that on strings six, five, and three, right? Or you can slide into it, then back down. That sounds nice. That, that's what I did there. And then the inversion of that. And then grabbing strings five, three, and two again. So it's really just some real basic uh, grips there, right? But they sound cool. I love I love those those chord voicings. That and then the inversion. Okay, so one more time, let's try that. Two, three, four. Walk it down. So just improvising it. Okay, so we'll just end it there. Like I said, I kind of wanted to keep this short and just show you a couple voicings, really useful voicings for playing um, this kind of boogie woogie blues, jump blues, rockabilly. I'm not sure the differences between all those different types, but uh, I know you know this kind of kind of the swinging kind of blues. Uh, some artists to check out, or at least one artist that I really love for this style is uh, Wayne Hancock. He's actually a guy that's still living today, although he sounds like he should be from the 40s or something, Hank Williams Sr. era, um, Wayne Hancock. But he's got lots of great lap steel players with him, Eddie Rivers and Tony Locke and Rose Sinclair, to just name a few. Um, but anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, be sure, if you want the jam tracks, uh, go to lwtstreaming.com and uh, get a subscription there, and you can get this and lots of other lessons. Okay. We will talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.